Hello everyone and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. Today we're going to review episode 3 of season 4, overall episode 68, written by Joss Haber and directed by Jason Thyssen and Big Jim Miller. It's also storyboarded by Emmett Hall and Tony Cliff. Here with me is Norman Sanso. Hello. Okay. Oh, I feel so special. I started the episode this time. Yay. So what's the title of the episode? The title of the episode is Castlemania. Ooh, and I brought my whip and candles. Do I really need them? <laughs> I, re- I didn't bring mine. I think I'm going to be in trouble. Well. Uh, no issue with the title nor anything. And I'm not going to focus on this much, but confirmed by George Haber himself, he wasn't making a reference to the Castlevania games. Sorry, fanboys. No, but the thing is, um, when I listened to the Brony Time interview, here's a fun fact. Uh, Brony Time interviewed Josh Harbour before this episode went out. So uh, he did say something about getting inspired by Castlevania, but I'm not 100% sure. But he didn't really want to say anything about it that much. So it... Yeah. To be honest, if they were really inspired by Castlemania, they would have had like uh, Pinkie Pie standing with a glass of wine, or or, or having a roasted pork chop inside a <laughs> inside a wall, or something like that. They didn't have any of that. Then again, ponies don't eat meat, so uh, <laughs> we're getting ahead true. of ourselves. Uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We are. We should talk about the, what the episode is about. What happens in it? All right, then. The episode starts with Twilight uh, reading books on her library and trying to figure out what was going on with that one chest that was inside the Tree of Harmony. And she's frustrated and she's finding no answers until Princess Celestia, for once, uh, tries to give her a hand, well, a hoof, and sends her to the castle of the old, of the two sisters that's located on the end of the Everfree Forest. And there she finds a treasure trove of books and, like, knowledge that has has been forgotten by time. And so she decides to stay there the rest of the night, trying to investigate and find any clues. At the same time, we have Applejack and Rainbow Dash trying to figure out who is the most daring pony and uh, who is bravest. And when they're... Be staring competition doesn't go so well, especially after Pinkie Pie bails on them. Uh, they decide to go to the castle of the two sisters to uh, stay there the whole night and see who gets spooked first. And whoever gets spooked first is the loser of the day in pony competition. And finally, the third storyline has Fluttershy and Rarity going to the castle through, uh, because Rarity wants to, uh, in her own words, restore when it's actually just Grave Robin, uh, <laughs> some old... It, it is Grave Robin. I mean, come on. She goes there trying to get her hoops on one of those ancient tapestries, and she takes Fluttershy with her because we need to have the sixth of the main six in the episode, just because. Um, so with the six of them in the... Well, with the, with the five of them, because we don't know where Pinkie Pie is, in the castle, they spend the night there, spooking each other without knowing it, and activating trap doors and secret walls until they find out that whoever was activating these trap doors and secret doors was Pinkie Pie using one of the organs in the, well, the massive organ in the castle. The episode ends with them learning a couple of lessons and setting up a new storytelling device, uh, which I guess is the substitute for the letters for the princess. That is true, that is true. Uh, the new storytelling device for this season, it's a bit... Uh, how do I put this? It's interesting, but it's a bit forced. But um... yeah, so um, the episode is basically that. That is, it's really, really simple, and it's it is it, like okay, this is probably one of the most simplistic stories in the in in the show the show has ever had, and I think that is the best way to go when you have a new writer coming on. That uh, so. This writer gets used to uh, the way the characters interact with each other. Um, because Josh Haber, uh, this is his very first episode, the very first episode he wrote. And to start with something so simplistic, it's a good idea. Oh, true, true. Starting off with the first scene that I like was um, Twilight trying to find an answer for the book, which is obviously you won't find any in the Ponyville library. And strangely enough, I, I don't think she'll any, find any books in the Cantaloupe library too. But it does bring up a good question on why does not Celestia know about the chess? Is it something new or 
has not has it, it not been discovered in the past or something like that? Well, it is clear that Celestia doesn't know anything about the chest uh, because Celestia knows nothing about the Tree of Harmony. If you remember in the in the in the season two premi- in the season four premiere, Celestia says very clearly she doesn't know where the keys are. So it is clear that this thing is something new. Um, we take Celestia for granted many times. Like we hear, oh, Immortal Princess, she's a thousand years old, and she she should know about everything. No, of course not. Uh, Celestia is proved that uh, all powerful beings are flawed. And they can make mistakes, and they can get something wrong. That's why I think that, yeah, she doesn't know about the chest, and she hopes that Twilight can know about that, ch- can learn something new about the chest. Because, well, to be honest with you, Twilight doesn't do anything else but reading books and staying in the library all day. Mm. We better give her something to do. And at least in this season, it looks like she's going to have a purpose. Now she has a mission. She has to find out what's in the chest. Well, there's a lot of jokes about the chest, but <laughs> let's not go yeah, in there. But- yeah, that's yeah. Because I, I, my favorite one is that inside the chest there is another chest. <laughs> so they are like that for season five. <laughs> no, my favorite one is that um, meme with Brad Pitt. You, you remember the one that says, "What's inside the box? What's inside the oh, box?" Oh god, that is, that is so old. <laughs> are like, it works. That is so old. No, it doesn't work because it's like okay, the box in seven. The box was a cardboard box. It wasn't like a chest. But I think we're getting out of topic here. Yeah, true. Uh, but uh, anyway. Yeah, uh, Moving on with the library scene, um, Twilight gets frustrated about the whole thing and throws a book at Spike. Well, nearly hits Spike, that is. And I do like the animation for this one. It really improves a lot from the previous season. Right away, the, the, this, this episode shows that the, the show is getting way... Uh, way out of uh, way out of hand with with its animation style, but in a good way because mm-hmm. it's so beautiful and it's so uh, fluid and it works really well. Um, I didn't want to jump right into this, but one of the things that I like about the intro was how well they capture the character of Solid Sparkle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, oh, what's so special? They've been doing that for, like, four, four seasons already. They better get the character right. <laughs> this is coming from a new writer. Um, and it's like, it's, if, to me, it's a feat of, uh, of uh, talent mm-hmm. that a new writer can come into the show and get the character right away. They captured Twilight Sparkle's naivete and wild-eyed wonder Perfectly. Mm, like, true, true. when Twilight steps into the library and her eyes light up. <laughs> <gasps> Look at all these books! And she, she completely loses herself. She flaps her wings up to the, to the uh, library shelves. She's t- she, she completely forgets about Spike. It's like, aside from Spike being scared to death. <laughs> and, and she's like, oh my god, this place is perfect. We're going to spend the night here. And she's so happy. I'm like, that's contagious. That's so... Uh, that's so cool. It sticks with how Twilight has always been. Like, oh, yeah, Twilight has always been the, po- the not the upbeat, positive character, but when you give her a book or when you give her something she's passionate about, it's it, it it's genuine. Like, it feels real. Like, oh God, you're so happy. I'm so yeah. and and you feel happy for her. That is true. That is true. And we get Applejack and Rainbow Dash doing their competitive thing. I do like that. Um, Josh Harbour, from what I can tell, he's playing, he's playing it safe. He's using what he knows best about the characters or using what the characters are already established with, like how Rainbow Dash and Applejack are competitive. Because in the previous two seasons, we haven't seen them being that competitive that much. The only time we saw them being competitive was in season one. I see so many people talking on uh, on image boards. Actually, this came straight from 4chan. That they said this episode feels a lot like a season one episode, and I am pretty sure that they say that because the personality of the personalities of Rainbow Dash and Applejack, like you said, they are played very safe. They are played very like very by by what the show bible put on put on the table that mm-hmm. they both have uh, competitive personalities they want to prove themselves bad uh, to be the best mm-hmm. like applejack at 
being one of the biggest providers of food to Ponyville, and Rainbow Dash being the, one of the best flyers out there, if not the best flyer out there. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's really cool to see them going back to that because, like you said, seasons one and two, seasons two and three. They had Applejack, just, Applejack and Rainbow just talking like uh, like friends or mm-hmm. like like you talk to your buddy. Um, if you have a competitive personality and you're friends with someone else who is also very competitive, that is never going to leave. That's going to stay with you. True, and true. It, 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 it's a bit sad that they didn't address that in previous seasons, but it feels go- at least it feels good to me that um, they addressed it in this episode. Mm-hmm. But you know, I I, I think. One of the other reasons why Josh Harbour used this plot device is, for one, is playing it safe. And for two, I think he misses that kind of competitive nature. Um, fun fact, um, everybody during the idea process for the writing throws out ideas that can write and Megan McCartney collects them all and see which one fits or which one she likes. And the story that Josh Harbour wrote here was not his idea. It was somebody else's idea. Usually when that happens is uh, they credit the other writer for that. How come they didn't credit the other writer? Where did you get this information? He did an interview on Brony Time. He talked about it there. So go listen to Brony Time. So who was the the original creator of the idea? He don't even remember because it was a while ago. It takes almost two years before the show comes out. So he got no idea who was the original um, idea or concept for Castlevania. Hmm. You know, whoever came up with the idea, I don't think they could have made a much better work than Josh Haber did with this. And I say this because of what he said on his Twitter. Uh, during the duration of the episode, Josh Haber was nice enough to do uh, an, AM, an AMA, like an Ask Me Anything. And he was live tweeting the episode as it was airing. Mm-hmm. And he was interacting with the fans and answering questions, so on and so forth. And one of the things he said... Uh, like, I asked him, and a few more, a few other people asked him, but uh, I asked him what inspired him to write this episode. And he said that he wanted to uh, feel like a child again, sitting in his PJs, <laughs> eating cereals and watching the newest Scooby-Doo episode. And when you think about that, this episode like has... It has a Scooby-Doo uh, kind of a structure. You have the characters, you throw them in a scary situation, and then... You put them against uh, against a supposed antagonist that is masked, or in this case is covered with a hood, and then you realize that the character that that was behind all of that, all of that mischief, is the one that appeared at the beginning of the episode, <laughs> just like a Scooby Doo episode. It has, it has a very Scooby Doo kind of a structure. Really, really. But anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. So after Rainbow Dash and Applejack, we got Rarity and Fluttershy doing stuff together. See. Like I previously said, it's going back to the safe spot of season one. Because in season one, we had Rarity and Fluttershy doing stuff together. And in season two, we, two and three, we don't see that much. Yeah, in season two, actually, we see Rarity doing more things with, with Pinkie Pie in season two than we see her doing things with Fluttershy. And it's established in season one that Fluttershy and Rarity, they are buddies. Like, and... Uh, we know this because they both share a passion for clothing mm-hmm. and they both have meetups in the Ponyville Spa. Mm-hmm. So it is it is pretty obvious that uh, both of them meet up and go along, go together to places. Yeah, and, and we haven't seen any of that in seasons two and three. Yeah, true. I, I mean, there could be some conflict or there could be other... How do you put this? They are doing other stuff because life. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But it's like... Okay, it's a cartoon show about colorful, ma- colorful magic horses. How come they didn't like go back to to that friendship? But the, to that friendship that uh, Fluttershy and Rarity seem to have, mm-hmm. because they, they seem to be close enough to each other. But yeah, I mean, it's also cool how uh, people wonder. Uh, I was watching the live stream. I watched the, the leaked episode, by the way, but I was watching it live, and people were like, "Why is Rarity taking Fluttershy along? She's..." <laughs> She's only there in the episode to um, to be scared and to <sighs> have jokes about Fluttershy being scared. And yeah, yeah, it's it's one of the reasons why she's she's there. She's just there to be uh, to be freaked out. But they justify it when they have Rarity ask Fluttershy to put down some of the uh, to pull down some of the tapestries that mm-hmm. are in the castle. And 
Funny enough, um, as we go into the castle, we get a nice pan shot of all the main six missing each other. It's one of those scenes that uh, is rarely done good in uh, any show. And I like how this is done because in the first scene, we can see Fatashai and uh, Rarity go into the castle and it pans up to um, Twilight at the... I, I got no idea. At the upper level of the castle... Looking yeah, down. she's like going, uh, yeah, mm. and then, uh, grabbing a, a, a chandelier with a bunch of uh, candles mm-hmm. on it. And it pans, after she moves out of frame, it pans out to the hall where we can see Applejack and Rare, you know, Applejack and Rainbow Dash um, trying to compete with one another. And those scenes and those cuts of pan, it's r- really good. And if you think about it, how was it done? It was done in a really nice, smooth motion. The technical aspects, the technical aspects of this TV show, are getting completely out of hand here. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they have, uh, we have always uh, said that Friendship is Magic looks gorgeous, like it's one of the best looking TV shows out there. But now it's getting absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The way the way they design this castle is so incredible. It's so amazing. It looks so good, just for production design alone. This is one of the best looking Friendship is Magic episodes ever made. Mm-hmm. And it's like how the castle looks at night, how the castle looks at day, uh, how uh, the, the corridors are lit up and uh, the, the, the design of, the, of, the, of that organ, of the armors. You see those tall ceilings and the, 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 the ruins and the, like, the crumbling... Uh, uh, columns mm-hmm. it's like the, the piles of rubble and the, it's like I'm, I'm a huge sucker for abandoned places and abandoned buildings <laughs> this makes me so happy it feels like they are going into one of those uh, castles from world war ii oh. that got completely demolished by the bombings and they are just wandering through the hallways and it's even creepier because you have that that creepy organ music playing at the same time all those trapdoors have been activated. But the best part is that all of this is aimed towards uh, towards pure and absolute comedy. Mm, true. This is this is by far one of the, one of the few episodes that had me laugh at every single minute. Every single joke that is in this episode to me, it works great. It has great timing, and it's 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 so cruel and heartless <laughs> that, like the nostalgia critic says, comedy is very based on misery mm-hmm. and making mm-hmm. other characters suffer. So seeing the main six get trashed, traumatized, and 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 put through the meat grinder <laughs> is so much fun. <laughs> like. You know, I hope Kitsune Rizzo hears this because I was watching Rarity getting <laughs> tossed left to right, her mane completely ruined, and I was like, oh, yes, please keep going. This is so much fun. I love that. <laughs> because I love seeing my favorite character suffer, oh, yeah. so, especially when it's done with, uh, with, uh, with fun and sense of humor. So in terms of comedy, this episode is great. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. That's, that's the best aspect of it, how it contrasts True. between... Uh, how the characters are getting trashed in this very spooky environment, but because you have all the information, you can t- you you, you can laugh silly, at the situation. Yeah, yeah everything, everything is silly. silly yeah. It, no, but yeah, even also uh, when we okay um, past the whole intro or past the whole setup of how everything is shown, we we get to see the main well uh, the ponies. Um, travel into the building discovering stuff that, well, as the ponies don't know about it. And as the viewers, we know we can, we, we know what's going on because, well, we have a bird's eye view of everything. Like, example, um, Rarity wants Fluttershy to pick up or um, try to lift up that banner or I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tapestry. It's yeah. a tapestry. Try, she tries try to, to lift it up. Tapestry and and then... somehow she activated the trap. A trapdoor, and she spun around, and at the same timing, um, Rare, um, Applejack and Rainbow Dash were kind of behind it, and they got spooked. Yeah, they got spooked because they confused Fluttershy for uh, 
uh, they confuse Fluttershy for a, a ghost. That's this episode is really based on uh, the, the the art of the misunderstanding. Mm, yeah. It is it is very difficult to pull off a comedy and make it genuinely funny. Entirely based on misunderstandings. Mm. But when they are misunderstandings for the sake of let's make it fun, instead of like let's have a misunderstanding for the sake of being uh, dramatic and, and create tension, that, that's, that's, that doesn't work. But in this case, it does. Because it's funny. You don't get spooked. You are, you're laughing because Fluttershy is the one behind that banner and she's spooking Rainbow Dash and Applejack. Two of the toughest ponies in the entire world, and they are getting spooked by the meekest of Pegasi. That is funny. You know what? Now, now that you mentioned it about a, a be, a being a show about full of misunderstanding, I, I can see it. And you know what? It's true because if you if you look at it or you watch it again, everything that happened was a misunderstanding and letting paranoia take over your sense of logic. Yes, it's it's the basics of basically any any horror movie spoof that is out there that it's uh, genuinely good. I mean, when you look at it from that from that perspective, the, the episode really works. Uh, all this time, they think they are getting attacked by a ghost, but no, you you know they are not getting attacked oh, yeah, by yeah. a ghost. They're getting attacked by uh, by an organ. Mm. Okay, <laughs> I would say attack, but every trap door is activated. <laughs> I, I like how Josh Harbour wrote this episode because it's not like any other episode that we've seen before. Um, Josh Harbour, he previously wrote for um, Kaiju... Well, I uh, forgot that show he did, but it's kind of a boy's show, um, action pack and really like Beyblade stuff show. And doing ponies, this one, it's a different... Well, I, I won't say different, but it's a change for him from what he is used to. Personally, I think it's uh, it, it shows how versatile this guy can be, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm willing to. to uh, I am really looking forward to see what he writes next, mm-hmm. uh, and not just because he said that his favorite pony to write for is Rarity. <laughs> um, he literally said that in his time, in his uh, Twitter. But I, I, I really want to see what else this man has to offer oh, yeah. because it's it's. I, I really don't know how to put it. But I like how he kept the story very simple. Josh Haber is really good when it comes to simple story and keeping the characters in character, oh, which yeah. is something it, it's something that many people don't take in, the, uh, t- take for granted. How uh, difficult it is to write in character a set of of characters that has been built up for three seasons. Like these characters have been developed for three years and. Now comes this uh, new writer, and it's so easy to completely screw up a character. Like, it is, it is really simple to just take a character and completely mess it up. Ooh, yeah, Those, like, I like this episode all right, but look at the mysterious murder well if you want an oh. episode where the characters are completely out of character. Oy. If you wanted to talk about out of character, look at Spike at Your Service. I, or I've Spike noted, at Your Service, yeah. I noted to everyone that I know that I hate that episode because how Spike is portrayed. Like, oh, God, uh, no. I like, like that episode because it's a great Applejack episode, but it's a horrible Spike episode for the I exact know. same reasons you are bringing up. And Josh Haber did a great job writing mm-hmm. its character. Like, Twilight was nerdy, but she was also very uh, bold and forward. Like, when mm-hmm. they uh, all together, they meet up. She is the one that takes command, showing that she is a natural-born leader. And mm-hmm. that's something that's really cool. That is awesome. Uh, uh, the same Applejack and Rainbow Dash, they are like, oh, boastful, boastful, we are not afraid of anything. Ah, what was that? <laughs> We're scared. And they're, gone, they're so gone, cute. Gone. They're so we cute want to go because home. two of the toughest ponies being the most scary. Okay, two of the toughest ponies um, showing their, um, I won't say sensitive side, but showing their um, scary cat side, like, they are so scared. Yeah. Like, remember the scene, um, Luna, no, not Luna Eclipse, uh, what was it? Sleepless in Ponyville. Yeah, Sleepless in Ponyville. You remember how Scootaloo acted? Yeah, of course. That's yeah. always awesome. Looking at Applejack and Rainbow Dash, two of the most toughest ponies acting scared or getting them scared. Because think about it. When can we look at them being scared without them admitting they're scared? Uh, this episode Besides, did that. Besides, Rainbow Dash covering her eyes with her wings. <laughs> yeah, Cute. 
Cute. Yeah, I know they're so cute. Oh my god, that was so adorable. Talking about cuteness and stuff, um, I I do like this episode. Like I did, I do like what DHX did with the animation for this one because um, during the beginning of Applejack and Rainbow Dash scene at the castle, um, Re- Applejack did the whole scary thing that she did in um, the sleepover episode. Look before you yeah. sleep. Yeah, yeah, I mean, those, those those little callbacks to, yeah, it's a callback to, it's all, I, will, I will call it a callback to season one, as well mm-hmm. as it is a way to recycle animation cells, because uh, every studio does it, even Disney oh, recycles animation, but yeah, I true thought true. it was really cool. I mean, mm-hmm. if they're going to bring something back from season one, bring the funny stuff, and that was, mm-hmm. that was one of the funniest things. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> that is so much, so much fun, man, so much fun. And... Uh, Talking about Applejack again, um, during the scene where she got back into the castle after somebody activated a trapdoor, letting her out of the castle and getting back in, um, when she wiggled her head to get um, her senses back together, she did a Donald Duck voice. Oh my god, I wasn't the only one who noticed that. <laughs> I, this is, oh, I, I was so... How do I put this? My geekgasm or my childhood was, oh my god, that's so cute. Oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling I, I have a feeling I'm not 100% sure about this but I have a feeling that um, Black Griffin did that one <laughs> in, out of all the expressions and no, all the expressions in this episode were outrageously funny like oh, yeah. when, when Rarity gets hit by a rock and she's like oh. <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> flutters high screaming angel <laughs> do you remember the scene where when Fluttershy got back into the room with Rarity after the whole ball spinning thing? Yeah. When Rarity comments something, Fluttershy gave Rarity a really dirty look, like, oh, you... You have to pause it when she says it, but you can look at her eyes like, oh my god. <laughs> you, you can tell that Fluttershy is really annoyed. <laughs> well, it's it makes sense, of course. I mean, Rarity, Rarity was kind of like a... I'm going to say a... That's not a word! ...during this episode, but she was really pushy. However, that's very like her. I mean, she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I hurt your wing. I think we're going to have to find somewhere else. Follow me! And disregard your injured wing. I don't care if it's broken. Oh, if it's broken, <laughs> we're just going to take you to the glue factory. It's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, I just love the expression. It's like... Oh yeah, it's in the wiki. You you can see she she gave she gave Rarity that pen that that pen look like oh god you are yeah she kind of roll her eyes because mm. but that's that's cool that's cool it's like in one single scene you have Rarity and on Flutters I described uh, their entire personality just with one look mm-hmm. it's like Rarity's nice and all that but she can get very pushy and mm-hmm. in the end I think she does get her punishment because after getting her main completely ruined. <laughs> And, and just getting attacked by this castle. <laughs> Towards the end of the episode, she's just saying, I'm going to oh. restore this, but I'm going to leave it on its place. <laughs> All this grief over this piece of cloth is not worth it. Yeah. And she's <laughs> completely, she completely stole the episode. Like, oh, Tabitha yeah. St. Germain left her lungs acting <laughs> in this episode. Oh, it's so um, good. It's, it's so oh, good. Man. That's the thing. I, I, I like Tabitha's acting here. It's really good. Yeah, I mean, every single actor did great, and uh, Tara Strong was also very, very good as Twilight, but Tabitha completely stole the show as Rarity. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's, she, she was really fun. No, no, you, you think um, Tabitha? To me, um, I think the one that stole the show was Ashley Ball, because um, cheating, a, a bit cheating here, because she played two roles. But to me, I enjoy, I really enjoy how Applejack sounds or her, her expression was during the whole episode. And I also enjoy Rainbow Dash, because those are the two toughest ponies getting scared. Oh my goodness, that is so funny. That's the basics of this episode, and I think that's why they it works so well. Because it throws the characters in a setting that they are not used to. Um, you can call yourself the toughest, the toughest, so I am the toughest. And then they put you into this situation you're going to get one-upped very mm-hmm. quickly. And mm-hmm. the best part is that uh, uh, towards the end, when the, f- uh, the four of them uh, clash together in the <laughs> main hall, and mm-hmm. they all start, like, the, one, of, it, 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 one by one starts panicking. Um, <laughs> I like how the ones that are panicking are, are just, like, 
not doing anything but running around are like Applejack and Rainbow Dash. They're completely aimlessly running around, <laughs> completely freaked out. And Fluttershy is also freaking out, but that's because she thinks Angel is in danger. And instead of, <laughs> of crying or like, well, she's crying, but instead of just not doing anything, she's trying to leave the column that she thinks <laughs> is crushing her bunny. And I'm like, that is so awesome. I, I was very happy with like, uh, with what they did with Fluttershy in this episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is, uh, her motivation to be in the castle is, uh, absolutely zero, but <laughs> what they did with her character wise was really cool. Mm-hmm. Like when you remove Angel away from her, you give her a reason to do something around the castle, so it is more engaging to follow her. Well, that's true, that's true. It, it's actually really engaging to follow both Fluttershy and, 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 and Rarity. They are out of the, out of the five characters that appear in the, uh, major, majorly in the episode, they are the most interesting ones. If you ask me who I would follow in this episode, I, I want to follow Fluttershy and Rarity because those two are good friends and how do I put this? You have one shy meek pony who has a motivation to find her bunny because uh, her bunny means everything to her and finding her is the number one thing on her checklist while Rarity's number one checklist is to get that tapestry down and restore it. That's about it. And them failing all together was oh god and when the column fell down and Fluttershy thought that Angel Bunny got squashed her motivation was even strengthened there and her trying to live up the thing as best as she can but failing and <laughs> but, comes but... Applejack <laughs> pouncing on the thing it's like oh god yeah yeah that's yeah yeah that's the thing that also that 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 made me go oh wow that's yeah, that that you know what that's really funny but it would be it would be absolutely horrible if we didn't know that Angel is not under that column. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's again, that again goes to the principle that uh, comedy is based around misery. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, the character is suffering like crazy. And mm-hmm. you will be suffering too because you don't want, out of all the points that you want to see suffer, you don't want to see Fluttershy suffer. Oh, no, no, you know no. she's going to be suffering the most of them all because it's it's Fluttershy after all. Oh, yeah. But it is it is hilarious because you know there is no point in her suffering because Angel is fine and when she sees Angel it's okay, she you can see her blushing because she's like oh did I just make a fool of myself? So overall we can say that the comedy in this episode works really well and it proves that friendship is magic can pull any kind of comedy. Oh true true and, and, and make it work. Yeah, but, and, and sorry if uh, we are focusing on Fluttershy and Rarity a bit too much because my favorite pony is Fluttershy and James' favorite pony is Rarity. So it doesn't, yeah. it's not only that. It's not only that. But if you think about that, it, it is clear that they gave a lot of attention to these two characters, oh, true, and true. they are the most interesting ones of the bunch. I'm not saying that Rainbow Dash and Applejack are not interesting, but when you think about it, all they were doing was just trying trying to prove who is the most daring one. And they just, they were just wandering around. They didn't have much of a reason to be in the castle other than to test each other. <laughs> Fluttershy and Rarity had a reason to be in the castle. Rarity wanted to pillage and rob all those, uh, all those uh, tapestries. And Fluttershy wanted to recover her bunny. But we are getting way ahead of ourselves. Oh, and yeah, we are yeah. already way too deep into the, uh, we are, we are really making this review very long and I wasn't aiming to make it so long. We need yeah. to streamline these, these reviews, Norman. We really need true, to. True, true. But you this know is what? your fault because this is, <laughs> this is your fault because I want to like keep talking about it and then move on to the next talki- topic. But then you are like, no, we have to keep talking about it. And I'm like, God damn it. Man. I just love the characters. Like I do. Okay. Here's the thing. I love the sound design for the show. I love the background music. I love the animation i love the voice acting it's it's too much of a good thing i don't know where to talk because it's too much to focus on oh my goodness it, it's okay so okay good. okay it's so and, good but to finish off mm-hmm. uh, uh later on when the main six are all inside this secret door that uh, twilight has found uh, they are inside the secret room. She has found uh, something called the Diary of the Two Sisters, which, to be honest with you, is the thing that we should have been focusing on because it's the focus of the episode. But oh, true, true. it's funny because we are, were not focusing on that because the episode wasn't focusing on that either. That scene or the diary was a bit forced, really, because... Uh, I don't think forced, but more like rushed. Yeah, yeah, because the whole setup for the diary, it's if it wasn't for Angel Bunny... Spike wouldn't have activated the trap door. But if you think about it, the 
trapdoor was a chair that you just pulled back, wouldn't 99% of people or ponies would just accidentally activate the chair because they wanted to have a chair to sit on? Not right? every I mean, pony sits on a chair. But no, if you remember if you it's get... a drive, if you remember it's Spike sitting on the chair, and yes, Twilight was sitting on the chair as well, yeah, but yeah. but you know what? I it's it, it's a classic reference to yeah, true, fantasy true. and adventure movies where you have mechanisms hidden all over this spooky looking place. So they move the chair and they discover this this one diary. And mm-hmm. Twilight spends the entire episode uh, reading this diary. So <laughs> then, towards the end of the episode, uh, Applejack asks Twilight, "Why weren't you afraid of this castle? What happened?" And then Twilight explains to Applejack that she wasn't afraid because she was reading about Luna's and Celestia's diary, and that mm-hmm. uh, uh, that uh, knowing about how the how life was when Luna and Celestia lived there made things a lot less scary. And oh, there they, they, they deliver probably one of my favorite lessons in the entire show that if you keep the past into consideration, if you, if you take the past into account, facing the future is not so creepy, not so scary. Mm-hmm. So I am like, that is something that goes beyond teaching something about friendship. That is something that you can learn from, for, for life itself. Oh, that's because true, it's that's like, true. yeah, if you don't know where you come from, how can you be prepared? Uh, about what's about to happen in your future and mm-hmm. where, how will you know where to go? But then comes the downer. Um, let's talk about the problems that right. uh, we may have about the episode. So you, you go first and, and then I will go second. Well, the only problem I can see in this episode, or in my opinion, is it's a bit too rushed because you have good setups here and you have a good joke coming on and yeah, you execute it, but sometimes it doesn't really feel like you fulfill that um, joke or it doesn't execute well. But to me, eh, it's a good episode. Um, I would say that for a single episode for this season, it's my top, but (laughs) it's kind of cheating because this is the only one episode for season four that's out. So yeah, we have to see how it goes in the future. I personally didn't have any problem with the timing. And to be honest, that's the first time I hear someone say that they have a problem with the timing. I guess that's fair enough. Uh, you know that com- comedy is 50% is part misery, part timing. And everyone gets a different way to approach timing. Maybe maybe for you, the timing wasn't that good. I, I wouldn't say it's not that good. I say it's a bit off. Like, you could really develop a bit more. But, the, well, I do understand it's a 22-minute show... Uh, on cable and stuff, so you need to compress a bit here and there. If they had one hour to build, like any good show, hey, um, <laughs> I'm all ears. If I have one problem, and one problem only with this episode is the absolute ending, and I'm not talking about the two morals or the new setup for the letters to sele- the, the way they are going to deliver the, the lessons, which I think it's ingenious. Because mm-hmm. uh, who needs Princess Celestia right now? We have Twilight right there. Let's write a diary, which oh, yeah. I think it's a very cool idea. Uh, it's something that people that are growing up watching this show are going to start <laughs> doing very soon. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all keep our blogs and people keep their personal diaries. So let's keep a diary for it. Yeah, let's do it. But mm-hmm. the thing that I have the problem with is that... Uh, that we have the main six and Spike in the in the secret room. They are doing their thing, and then the camera pans out as Spike says, Pah, "Ghost stories. They are so lame." And then the camera pans out. They look outside in the library, and then we see a shadowy figure, glowing eyes, and they crash to credits. I hate that. Okay, okay. I hate that. I hate mm. horror stories or horror movies or horror anything or like shows, TV shows, whatever, that give you either a fake out, a jump scare, or a false cliffhanger. And mm. that, my friends, is a false cliffhanger but from what know. I know. I mean, no, no, no. Let me, let, me, let me finish this because this is very important. You don't need to do that. You could have very well just pull the camera out of the castle and close with a nice shot of the castle at night. That's spooky, it's smoothy, it's atmospheric, and it keeps with the tone of the, of the rest of the episode. What's your opinion overall? I think this episode is great. It's very mm. funny, very entertaining. It feels very short, 
because it was so much fun that I didn't want it to end. I did, I wanted it to keep going. It presented a new a new setting. It explored that one castle that we are presented in the very first mm. episode of the series. That we see this castle that is completely ruined, and we we never get back to it, and now we get back to it, and we mm. see everything that is inside it, and it feels so satisfying to finally see this. Uh, uh, finally see these corridors and these, uh, mm. these rooms and, and how Luna and Celestia live. Like, oh my God, that kind of <laughs> castle that is actually kind of spooky. But yeah. it's so awesome that we have this episode. And All true. For, a, for, a, for a newcomer uh, to come to the show and write these characters and get the characters right, that is a lot to... That is, that is really cool. I mean, yeah, they don't do anything new with them. They don't, like, further develop or build up on the characters. Like, the characters stay the same, and they do, they do learn a new lesson, but they don't, like, character develop them. But why do you need that when you get the characters to be exactly like they are? I mean, Josh Haber is a newcomer to the show, and it feels like he's been writing for Friendship is Magic since the very beginning. That's the beauty of this episode. Like, it does the thing that it's supposed to do right, right. Everything else is a, more than a welcome uh, a nail a nail in the head. Mm-hmm. True, true. And, well, for me, um, I do enjoy the episode, and I would say go watch it again, because it's a really fun episode. Um, I would say turn off your brain kind of situation is not fair. I would say that this episode is a good episode for... Josh Harbour, because before this, he didn't do much in terms of kiddie shows or shows that are not full of pack, action-packed things. And this episode was a good start for him. And I would say I love the throwbacks to the old episodes and stuff because, like I said, um, getting Applejack to do her ooh, scary face, listening to the old Donald Duck thing... And looking at the whole character, it's really good. And, well, i will be just repeating myself if I just keep going on. I would just say, go watch it yourself and judge it for yourself. I say two thumbs up. It's a very good episode, people. And just because it has a very simplistic plot, it doesn't mean you have to mistreat it and call it trite. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a bottle episode, and I know those are a niche market, and not everybody likes them. Mm-hmm. But it is a very well done, very well shot, beautiful, uh, interesting, filled with interesting characters bottle episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's absolutely and outrageously funny. So mm-hmm. if you are unsure about it, I, I definitely am not. That is, it's not on my top 10 favorite episodes. It's probably not even in my top 10, 20, but it's <laughs> definitely in my top 30. Like, it is, it is one of the most enjoyable episodes of the entire series. Well, James can uh, separate all that in his head because he's a dictionary for MLP episodes. As for me, I would say this is my favorite MLP episode for season four. That is a one-parter. And, well, to be honest, this is the only one-parter showing. And, well, James, what is next week's episode? Next week's episode is Dead in Don't, written by mm-hmm. Dave Polsky. Mm-hmm. It's an episode where Rainbow Dash is f- uh, reading her favorite novel series, Dead in Do. Mm-hmm. And she's about to read on the f- last one, but then she discovers that the last book is not going to be completed. <gasps> so Ooh. she does her best to try and get the author of Dead in Do to finish the book, because <laughs> she needs to know the ending. Dun, so, dun, dun. yeah, well. dun, dun, dun. Well, I know where's my favorite episode coming next. <laughs> you change favorite episodes like you change jackets. You are such a traitor. Hey, I, I have to review all 26 episodes before I give my verdict. And, well, <laughs> each new thing is my favorite. But anyway, so guys, um, there was this episode review. We just reviewed Castlemania episode 3 for season 4. And we hope that you enjoyed it. So if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themvshow.gmail.com. If you have any questions for us about the episode, do email us because we love answering them and we have our own headcanons that we want to share with you. <laughs> we want attention. We want attention. Throw us a peanut, please. We're hungry. <laughs> oh, that, that's true. That's true. But anyway, you can also catch us on Twitter. You can reach the show's account at the MBS show, sweetie, but we'll comment on things and talk about how she edits the episode and stuff. And you can 
tweet me at Norman Sanzo. I'll talk about toys, food, and anything that tickles my fancy. And what about you, James? Yeah, you can reach me at James Cork at, uh, in Twitter, or you can find me in askmovieslate.tumblr.com and on DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com. And you guys want to follow me because I draw ponies and and I have commissions open. And true, true. I need food and money because it's Christmas and I'm going to end up with my ass on the street so please help me out actually I'm not doing that bad but I'm doing a commission request uh, a request stream very soon so you guys definitely don't want to miss that true 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 and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page yes we have the Facebooks um, links will be provided in the show notes and we'll catch you next week bye guys bye bye everybody bye